the cosmic brain explodes. A neo-gnostic treatise on the eternal truth by Antioxymoron. Well, it was in the mid-1980s. I was training to become a psychiatric nurse at Graningwell Hospital, one of those old mental asylums now being converted into housing. One day I found myself a rather shy student nurse in the office of one of those acute wards, that is, the one dealing with new admissions. In those days, we were crammed into a small office full of smoke before the ban of more enlightened times, when a woman I hadn't seen before suddenly burst into the room unannounced and said, there will be seven writers who will write a book upon the eternal truth, and you're one of them. <laughs> At the time, I'd been reading a lot of C.G. Jung's work, and so I replied, oh, seven evangelists this time. To the obvious surprise of the nurses, you weren't supposed to go along with the delusions of people. You? <laughs> That's it, you've got it, she said, and left. It's often been women who have inspired me in life's directions. For example, when I was a young boy, I used to visit a woman who travelled in visionary landscapes and created pictures of them, nature spirits, multicoloured skies and amazing buildings lined with sculptures of hollowed out lions filled with honey. This later inspired both my interest in spiritual art such as plates and in art therapy, the sharing of creativity and inner intimacy. To such Beatrices I dedicate my hymn to Sophia, the goddess of wisdom in remembrance of the fact that a philosopher is always a lover of wisdom. To she, to she who is, to she who is wisdom, implicit without knowing it, she who saw the invisible worlds and revealed them in images, she who descended into the underworld and returned with the light. She who was wounded and yet healed. She whose heart beats to nature's rhythm, who is a warrior who nurtures life. And she who is the very presence of visible music, radiating love to all people. She who saves animals and whose eyes are full of infinite love. Oh, Sophia, goddess of wisdom, teach me, inspire me to ever greater and further things. I won't read all of it, don't worry. <laughs> that is a taste of it. In the names of the creative, the transcending, the imaginal, I am in the before. I am pre-beginning, before the word, before the thought, before knowledge. In the infinitely small seed of potentiality, I sing silently, I breathe my own being timelessly. From where you are now, I cannot be. There is no place for the before there, no space in the before in which I or anything can be, and yet I am there. Not was, as there is yet no time. Can the before be in the now? In the process, in the non-process, in the before process, infinite process mirrors infinite regress, yet the process is not yet. 
I am the hidden treasure that wishes to be known, and yet only known if thou knowest. I can only be known in knowers, in their knowing of themselves, in that I can know myself, knowing them in me. Therefore, I must begin. In a sense, I am there. I empty myself of all singularity, of all sufficiency, of all fullness. I surrender all I am outwardly into the new fullness, ever-expanding Paroma of the All, into the new multitude of forms ever appearing. I become nothing, to allow the All to become that I may come to be in the All. I explode with creation and destruction evermore, ever further. Endless swirls of complexity pour from me, ever outward, until the non-me becomes to be that in which I can be born.